Today, I'm gonna to show you why having updated context is really important for your coding agents. First, we're gonna scaffold a simple TypeScript web app using the Microsoft Learn MCP server. Then we're gonna switch gears and use the Context7 MCP server to help us build on that web app and compare and contrast some examples with Context7 and without Context7. If you have no idea what I just said, don't worry, we're gonna dive in right now, let's go. I first provided a simple prompt describing what I wanted, which was to scaffold a TypeScript web app. This web app takes some comic APIs, allows the user to select two characters and combine them using an image model. You'll notice that I also called out ShadCN here to help structure the UI. You can see it drafted a plan, set up the types, integration with the APIs, and more. After the plan was drafted, I specified the image model I wanted to use, which was GPT Image 1, and where I wanted it hosted, which was on Azure AI Foundry. Then I told it to use the Microsoft Learn MCP so that it can retrieve some of the most relevant developer docs. You'll see that during the scaffolding process, it calls the Microsoft Learn MCP tool and extract some of the relevant documentation for its context. Now let's jump to the end of the process and launch our web app. I'm going to search for Iron Man to see if our Marvel API is working, followed with Batman for the Comic Vine API. Now let's test to see if everything is working as expected for the image gen. Cool. Looks like everything is working well. You can see with the help of the MS Learn MCP, we were able to scaffold a web app that integrates various APIs. But now I actually want to have some fun. So whenever I think of comics, for some reason, it makes me think of the arcade. And so I want to mess with the UI a bit and implement an 8-bit mode. But we're going to do a test here. First, we're going to test implementing 8-bit mode without the Context7 MCP. Then we're going to implement it with the Context7 MCP and see which one we like better. So let's go ahead and go back to the editor. Let's start implementing the 8-bit arcade style theme without the Context7 MCP. I'm going to tell Copilot to use this branch of ShadCN called 8BitCN to see if it can implement the theme on its own. Now let's go ahead and submit the prompt and let it cook. Okay, let's see what we got here. It's decent, but I still think there's a lot of room for improvement. The top banner isn't super legible, and I'm not really seeing a ton of 8-bit styling besides some of the buttons. It's a solid 3 out of 10 for me. Now let's switch back to the editor and see how Copilot does this with Context 7. You can see in my prompt above, I instructed Copilot to use Context 7 this time around. Here, it's asking me to execute the MCP tool call, and once I confirm, you will see Context7 searching through its library, returning relevant docs and snippets, so that Copilot has the context it needs to complete the task. All right, so now we're gonna check out the arcade mode that Context7 produced. So as you can see, it's a lot more vibrant. The titles are actually legible. There's a lot more 8-bit characteristics kind of implemented into the UI itself. There are some inconsistencies like clipping of text boxes into some of the titles, but I think this is a lot better start than what we got without Context7. What do you guys think? If you liked what you saw today from vibing an image playground with the Microsoft Learn MCP to editing that image playground with Context7, then you can go to github.com slash MCP and install the MCP servers in VS Code or VS Code Insiders. We have Context7 here and Microsoft Learn right below it. Happy coding, y'all.